Hi, we're now ready to trim our covered jar system. We've let it dry to a state that we call leather hard. Uh, one uh, example of leather hard is uh, brick cheese, so you can refer to leather hard as brick cheese consistency. Uh, there's still moisture in it, but it's firm. Now we're going to learn how to trim the lid. Actually, to trim this kind of lid or to finish or tool the bottom, we actually use the jar to do that. And to prepare the jar for trimming the lid, we need to center it. To center the jar, we can rely on the rings on the wheel head to help us find where center is on the bottom. And then to make sure the lip is centered where we're, where we're working on is we can use our finger to gauge if it's centered. And I'm going to purposely throw it off center a little bit so you can see what this looks like. I'm holding my finger very still. I see it release and then I stop the wheel where it comes back again. So there's a gap. I move the jar into the gap and that's what I use for centering. So there's where the gap starts, there's where it ends. I guess how far I need to move the jar into the gap and then I try it again. And now it's just slightly off center. And we're ready to go. First thing we do is I want to make sure that I do not trim through the lid. So I put my finger on the inside, I turn it over and I slide my needle tool through the lid until I feel the point touching my finger. I then grab the needle where it's coming through, hold on and pull out and there's the thickness of the lid. I then take the needle and put my finger on the hole and press down and then draw lines on the hole and at the end of the mark. And I've just recorded the thickness of the lid on the back or the bottom of the lid. We can set this lid into place. And with this technique, we're actually using the jar as a chuck or a device to trim the lid. Right now I'm placing a clay coil at the base of the jar just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere so it stays still. I have an assortment of very basic trimming tools which I'll be using to trim with. To initiate trimming, I don't want to remove this mark because it's a gauge for me. What I do is I'll trim alongside that mark. And I cut down a conservative amount and I'm making a little shelf. Now I can take my trimming tool and gauge that depth on my trimming tool and then compare it to my mark. And so I have uh, probably three eighths of an inch of clay left which tells me I can even cut down a little further. And I repeat this and then I can put it up against my mark now it says that I have an eighth of an inch of clay remaining approximately. And now I like that thickness. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use this shelf now as a standard for how far I can trim down. So I can remove my gauge that was on the bottom by trimming. And notice the jar itself is holding my lid in place. And I did not need holding clay 
to hold my lid in place because the moisture consistency of both the lid and the jar cause it to stay in one place. And we can see that here's my ledge. If you're trimming for the first time, it's very important to have control on your trimming tool. So you'll notice that I have two hands supporting the trimming tool. And actually I have one elbow on my leg to give me control too. Trimming clay is very much like the throwing process. To center clay, to open, to pull and shape it, you need to have control. So you want to keep these surfaces very firm. And then I just finish up little details, round it and smooth it. You can remove the scraps as you go. You can remove the lid, remove the scraps out of the lid register. And you can check the fit. And so now our lid fits just fine and it'll function exactly the way we want it to. And that's the lid. The next thing we'll do is trim the bottom of the jar. Now I've taken the jar, I've turned it upside down on its lip, and I've centered the jar. We can see the, the way I've centered that. And I've put holding clay on the bottom. I also gauge the thickness at the bottom, bottom by putting my needle through and then creating the depth at the bottom. Sometimes that's helpful. Some potters might do that and some other potters may not. And what I do is I just cut a kind of a, a little notch right next to it. So then I can gauge the thickness. So this is just another technique to um, grasp the right thickness or determine the thickness of your clay and also determine how much you can cut through. I'm happy with that thickness. So now I'll rely on this as a uh, as a guideline. Trimming does three basic things to a vessel. It removes excess clay at the bottom, which you can see me doing right now. As we're removing excess clay from the bottom, it changes the shape. It changes it, it refines the shape. You can leave those trimming lines in if you want. It's up to you. And trimming creates a distinct foot or base. This is the outside of the foot or base, which I intend to round to fit the aesthetic of the lip and the lid. We can also create the inside portion of a foot or define the inside of the foot. What I do is I take the corner of a trimming tool and I start by 
basically drawing or cutting a line to define where the foot will be. Then I remove the center clay and I start from the center and I cut toward the line and when I reach the line I pause and release. Now we're working with leather hard clay which I call brick cheese consistency. It's soft, but it's firm enough so it won't deform. The way I check for thickness is I use what's called the bounce technique. If I bring my fingers close to center and put pressure, we can see the bottom moves and bounce, bounces back. I do that after every trimming maneuver. And that allows me to know how thick, or it gives me a good idea how thick the bottom is or how much clay I have remaining. And that feels very good to me. I then finish trimming by just addressing some of these edges. Another thing that I'm concerned about is I don't want this surface of the foot to scratch things or to try to limit scratching. I take my fingers and I smooth that surface. And the very final thing that I do on my work is I'll sign it and I'll just show you the way I sign my work. I don't use this point of the needle because it'll cut through the clay. I actually use this edge of the needle. And that creates a nice puffy, wide lined signature. You'll notice these little areas where the clay is frayed. I don't touch them at this point. I let them dry and then I just simply, simply smooth them away with my finger after they're dry. And now we've seen the trimming demo. Let me just remove the clay so we can see our finished creative cover jar with the lid in place.